Hi, this is Estev. In this video, we'll uncover the three most common strategies people use to influence each other. To illustrate these, we'll look at the world of street petitioners operating in a train station. If you've ever done volunteering work, you'll know just how difficult it is to approach strangers respectfully. We'll also look at the advantages and disadvantages of each of those strategies. The first strategy is domination. And it's seen in the media with political, TV debates. It's probably the most common form of communication in academic and religious circles. You'll recognize it when you hear people talking about winning versus losing, being right or being wrong, and saying yes but rather than yes and. When you appeal to power status or reason to influence a person with the underlying belief that you need to win people over, this often leads to arguments in which you naturally want to be on top. People are often afraid of being dominated by others, so they do their best to argue in advance their point of view to prove the other person wrong. The benefit of domination is that you can quickly get what you want. And it feels like you're winning, which does feed the ego, but nobody likes to lose. What happens is in the long term, everyone loses out because it creates an endless cycle of one-upmanship in a constant competition for survival. At best, it tends to create a friendly competition and at worst, constant conflicts. On a scale of me versus other, it's when you focus more on yourself. Let's observe the first strategy with a snapshot of communication. Here is Elena, the street petitioner. She's trying domination as a strategy to get signatures from people in a railway station. We've got the head-up display with the green, blue, red icon at the top left-hand corner in white, which means we are observing the situation through the green, blue, red lens. So she says, hey, you, stop. I want to tell you about our petition for our organization, and so on, she carries on, which is, from a communication point of view, an order at the verbal level, and it's in her own timing, with an assumed intention to take over. Manipulation is when you appeal to emotions like fear or guilt to influence people. It's often seen in courts, sales, advertising, and politics. The second strategy is like lawyers do in movies. Manipulation is an interesting word. It comes from the Latin manipulus, connected to the idea of hands shaping another person's actions, but without being open about their deeper and often hidden intentions. It's when you don't take time to clarify your intentions. Manipulation is when you appeal to positive or uncomfortable emotions to influence a person with the underlying belief that if you were honest about your intention, the other would probably not agree. Therefore, it feels safer to hide your intentions and be manipulative. In politics, particularly during wars, manipulation is done through propaganda. The benefit of manipulation is that it's a very effective way to influence people, which means we manipulate others to get what we want. Unfortunately, it's dishonest and disrespectful. The first strategy of domination is more and more regulated by laws, but manipulation is more difficult to control by our society. On the individual level, manipulation leads to exclusion. When, for example, you start to favor or target people based on your own preference. For example, if you only hire people you know when you discriminate against people of certain ages, gender, or ethnicity. This leads to racism, sexism, and ageism in the worst cases. It feels good as long as you are in the right group. On the governmental level, manipulation quickly scales up to become corruption if it's used as the main strategy of communication. On the scale of me versus other, manipulation is in the middle, but the focus is still more on what you could get out of the other person rather than focusing on the other person's interests. This time, Elena is going to try another approach. She smiles and says, you look like an aware citizen who is interested in the well-being of the human race. This is what we call a positive phrase. With her open body language towards the other, we assume she's got an intention of changing the other person's mind. 
Every single technique you learn here or notice here can be used to manipulate others. It's really up to you how honest you are about your deeper intentions. But what is the alternative? Therapists are some of the rare professions which use the third strategy, which we'll call conscious communication. Conflict mediators, police negotiators, diplomats and therapists are often trained in conscious communication. It's when people respectfully make an effort to adapt to the other person by building trust before suggesting an action. When used over time, it leads to more fulfilling relationships. At a collective level, this conscious strategy is very rarely seen and even less recognized, taught or even celebrated. It's hard for people to imagine it's even an option. Conscious communication is when the person is aiming to be honest and respectful of all parties. The benefit of conscious communication is that it builds influence through trust. The downside is that it requires more effort than manipulation or domination does. Voicing the elephants in the room that everybody else is trying to ignore demands more courage. That's why we call it the martial art of conscious communication, to remind ourselves that it requires a lot of practice. On the scale of me versus other, it's when you focus more on the other person than yourself. Let's watch Elena try the third strategy. How often have you been approached by a stranger in a way that made you feel respected? She says, you're probably in a hurry and haven't planned to stop and talk to strangers like me. It's always annoying when someone stops you just as you're trying to catch a train. This is called an accusation audit and is a commonly used technique by hostage negotiators to quickly lower the other person's defenses and build trust, particularly when combined with open body language and an intention of respect. Each of these strategies work to influence people, including in getting signatures in the street. Here's a downloadable infographic for you to remember that you have a choice in how you influence people. The following videos will be opening up the conscious strategy more than the domination or manipulation ones, because it's the only way to influence people with respect and build trust in your communication. If you like reflective learning, you can pause this video to take a few moments to reflect on what strategy you are aware of using most often at work. When you need to influence others, are you dominating, manipulating, or trying to consciously influence them?